Hi, I'm Ivan. This is DIY Detail. Today we're going to go over different methods of polishing and using your machine. This video was recorded at a previous location at a previous date, so bear with us. The background's a little different than what you're used to seeing, but the information is there. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, don't forget to leave them below. I love answering your questions. And here you go. Well, today we're going to go over polishing, the basics of polishing. Every vehicle can probably stand to be polished just a little bit. We don't want to over polish a vehicle. Every time we're polishing, we're removing clear coat. And where we're removing clear coat, we're shortening the life of that clear coat. And we're shortening the life of the vehicle. We want to be the least invasive possible when we're polishing. In front of me, I've got a couple tools that are essentials when it comes to polishing. First of all, I have a dual action machine. This is a Rupes 15 millimeter. And by dual action, we see that not only is the pad spinning, but it's also orbiting. So this one has a 15 millimeter orbit. They also make them in eight, 12, and 21. What that orbit does is it gives you a slightly faster cut, and at the same time, you reduce the incidence of swirls. So a lot of people are afraid when they're polishing with the rotary that they're going to get swirls. This eliminates that. There's one little inconvenience though with a dual action machine is that you can get micro marring. And micro marring comes from that action of the, the polisher changing direction very rapidly. This is a rotary and a rotary all it does is go in a circle. It's that easy. So it just keeps going round and round and round. The rotary for me is my finishing tool and the dual action is my cutting tool. And I know that's a little backwards from what you've seen before and heard before, but hear me out. The dual action, because of its dual action, actually cuts faster when you're using an appropriate pad. And pad design has evolved dramatically. With this pad, it's a combination of wool on the surface and a foam on the back. The foam gives you resilience, gives you flexibility, but the wool gives you great cut. And wool has another advantage over other types of materials is that it stays cooler compared to a microfiber or foam. And the cooler you can be, the better your polishing will be. The cooler the paint is, the faster the cut will be and also better the finish. The other tool that we have on the cart is obviously pad washer. Now, if you're a home hobbyist, you're doing one or two cars a year, you don't need a pad washer. If you're a professional or even a very advanced hobbyist doing a couple cars a month, then definitely you need a pad washer. It's a great investment. And yes, it's a couple hundred dollars, but that's money that's going to come back to you dramatically. Your pads are going to last longer, your pads are going to be in a better quality, and they're going to cut better because, first of all, they're cool, they're clean, and they have a bit of dampness to it. And that dampness actually helps us. So the pad washer, I have polish on the pad. I'm going to start by cleaning my pad. And that's a couple little sprays. And this has a head in it that when you do this, it brings water or uh, the cleaning solution into your pad. From there, I'm going to rub the pad at a low speed. Against the head of the pad washer. Then I'm going to increase the speed all the way and remove the excess moisture. Now my pad is ready to use. While it's still spinning, one spray of polish. And now I have thousands of little drops of polish spread all over the pad, as opposed to three or four drops. A lot of companies will have you put three or four drops of polish. And when you do that, you're actually using a lot of polish, too much polish. So this sprayer, we just put one spray and that's all we need to cut. But if we do one pull of the sprayer, that's the pea size drop that everyone has you put three or four of those on your pad. You're going to be using a lot less polish using a sprayable polish. Let me clean the pad again because now I have too much polish on. Now I have an even distribution of polish on the pad, I'm ready to polish. There are a lot of different types of polishing pads as well. We have microfiber pads, we have foam pads, and we have wool pads. Microfiber is a very aggressive way of cutting. 
Wool cuts just as fast as microfiber, but keeps the surface cooler. And foam, there's two different types of foam. We have a flat foam pad and we have a waffle foam pad. And the waffle foam gives you a lot more control over the machine, gives you a better user experience and keeps the surface cooler. Keeping the surface cooler makes your life easier and makes the polishing job a lot better. Before you start polishing, a few things that you need to do. The vehicle needs to be clean, it needs to be decontaminated and have nothing left on the surface. If you have water spots, you will not be able to polish away water spots. You need to remove the minerals that cause the water spots first. So be careful if you do have water spots, use a water spot remover before you start polishing. If you've never polished before, the machine can be a little intimidating. Don't worry about it. The machine is actually very simple to use the less you try to maneuver the machine. In other words, let the machine do its job and you simply move the machine. So I'm gonna start quarter of the shoulder so it's not dragging on the vehicle. Roughly speed three. And I'm going to use the trigger lock. Trigger lock is important. It is there to give you range of motion. If you're holding onto that trigger, it basically locks your wrist and your elbow. By using the trigger lock, now I can put my hands where I need to. So you'll notice I'm barely holding onto the machine. I'm not putting any weight or pressure on the machine. And it's actually going to cut faster in that way. And when you do a test spot, you want to do three passes. So up and down, left, right, and up and down with a 50% overlap. And using two towels, I'm going to wipe off the polish residue, a damp towel and a dry towel. The damp towel cuts through the polish residue and at the same time provides lubrication. And then the dry towel to remove that. So here we have it. We've eliminated the scratches. Now we don't have the clarity that we desire because first of all, I used a dual action machine and I used a wool pad. So that wool pad is doing a lot of cutting. It's aggressive. We need to refine the surface with the other pad but come in, have a close look. You can see the clarity. We got rid of those surface scratches, but we didn't remove a lot of clear coat, and that's the goal. And if we go to a before, you can see a big difference. So now, let's refine the surface. <laughs> To refine the surface and get the ultimate gloss, I'm going to be using the rotary. Now, a lot of people are afraid of the rotary. The rotary, as soon as it gets within a foot of the paint, it's going to burn the paint off the vehicle. That's not true. The rotary is misunderstood. We'll put it that way. Speed one, so the lowest speed the rotary will go. I'm using a waffle pad. The waffle pad gives us a lot more glide, a lot more flexibility, and no pressure on the machine. So again, a damp towel, followed by a dry towel. Now we can see we have great clarity. We can see all those beautiful little metallic flakes.
and we removed all the surface marring. Now there's still a few deeper scratches and we're going to leave those there. We actually don't want to remove all the scratches from paint because if you do, you're removing too much paint and when you remove too much, you're damaging your vehicle. One way of determining what size area you're going to be polishing, very easy, use a towel. That should be roughly the size of area you're polishing. Easy to determine, easy to see. Now here I have a bit of polish laid out here just to show you how we want you to do the action. And that is we have a six inch pad. So I'm going to go like here, here, and here, create an S pattern. That pattern with a three inch overlap. So I have a half the pad that I'm overlapping every time. Once I've done a pass in that direction, I'll do one in this direction again with the same overlap, and then I'll finish in this direction. And that will give you three uniform passes that then you know exactly what you've done. So we've refined this area with the rotary, cut it with the dual action machine, and wiped it off. Now we're ready for our protection. Now, can you cut with the rotary? Of course you can. And can you finish with the dual action? Yes, you can. It's up to you. And if you only have one machine to get, I would say a 15 millimeter dual action machine is a great tool to start with. From there, add to your arsenal as time and money allows. Thanks for watching. If you had value from this, please leave us a comment below, maybe a thumbs up and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video on DIY Detail.